Hello everyone and welcome back to another mini tutorial session here in Procreate and for today's video guys we're actually going to have some fun here with face masks in Procreate. This is a feature that actually exists inside the reference option in the new version of Procreate 5x and then use the face application so that you can see your illustrations in uh, apply to your face and actually your animations. So this is going to be a animation tutorial while using face masks in Procreate. So I'm hoping that this is going to be a super cool one to try it out for you guys to try it out. Now, that being said, there is a little bit of a disclaimer. This feature is only available to iPad models that actually have the face recognition on the front camera. So although unfortunately not all iPads have this feature, I'm hoping that in the future more and more will come out with face recognition so that more people can actually play with this little option. So let's get started. The very first thing here that we need to do is to create a canvas. I'm gonna be creating a 2048 by 2048 square canvas here in Procreate 5X. And now the next step is that we have to go into the actions menu, go into canvas and turn on reference. Now that I've turned on reference, I'm actually going to swap this feed into my iPad capture because once I hit face here, I actually need to prop this so that you can see my face. And here I am. And I'm sorry for being left-handed. My hand is probably gonna cover a little bit of the camera. I'll try to make it not cover as much as possible. And uh, the very first thing that I actually want to do here is to find on my canvas these circles, find these uh, crosshairs actually, where I'm gonna be drawing these circles. As you can see, one is already placed here on my left eye and uh, or my right eye actually and what I actually want to do is to first define some areas where uh, the features of my face are so eyes nose and mouth so we found first eye here so I'm just gonna three finger swipe duplicate this it's a little awkward to actually have the iPad uh, in this format just kind of like lifted now I'm going to merge these layers and I'm going to draw triangle right here if I can so something like this and I'm going to move it more or less like so I'll show you guys in a second why am I doing these things it's because uh, basically we're setting up the places or the areas of the face because I won't be actually drawing the animation in this tutorial of drawing an animation here in Procreate 5x and using this feature of the face mask we're not going to be staying. Uh, we're not going to be hanging out in this mode here. I'm going to actually exit this mode, go back into animation mode, and be able to um, to animate. So I'm just going to close the face feature. And as you can see, once I close the reference feature, now the crosshairs are gone. But I am left here with the features of the face. So I know where the eyes generally are with these circles. I know where the nose is with the triangle, and I know where the lips are with the little ellipse. So now I can rest the iPad back here. Uh, you probably can't see much back in the camera side, but I'm gonna turn on, turn back on background. And that is because the reference layer actually turns it off automatically, just so you can see the features of your face, of course. Like it makes sense, otherwise you would just see like a whole solid uh, across your face. So now we have our base here. So the next step now is to go into the actions menu and turn on animation assist. So now we have our guide layer right here as one of the frames. So what I'll do is that I'm going to add a frame, but in fact, I'm going to select this guy here, make sure that it's in front of it. I'm gonna tap on it and I'm gonna call it foreground. So why am I calling this a foreground layer? It's because now I can keep adding frames as many as I want and my foreground layer, which is in fact our mask boundaries, are always going to be there to help us out in order to create our animation. So this is just like a quick trick that basically we went from the beginning of this tutorial, a way to set up the boundaries of uh, you know the, the elements of the face so we know where they are, we can call it as a foreground layer, and now we can animate with the remaining of the layers. And just one more thing to show you guys is that if I actually draw here at the corner, the boundaries of the canvas, you can see that it's actually drawing at the very edge of my face. Same goes if I draw it at the top, sorry for my hand covering the camera, but you see that it's actually painting right here on, on my forehead. Let's go a little longer so you can see. So basically 
we have the features of the face and I also know that the edges of the face will actually are bounded to the edges of my canvas. So now we have all the locators, we're ready to start animating. In the animation stage, I actually had a lot of fun making these elements. So the very first step is that I used the Studio Pen, made sure that the Streamline option was at 100%, and then I just drew the paths where I knew that I wanted my elements to run through the face. So that layer, I've actually set that layer as a background layer, and then I made sure that the opacity of both these layers, background and foreground, was set to a little lower than 50%, so that I could start animating on top. Lastly, I also made sure to use Onion Skin, the Onion Skin feature in the Animation Assist in Procreate, and I set it to about three frames of Onion Skin. Then I just started to draw the, the elements that were just running through these paths. So I started with the blue element, and just frame by frame, kind of try to create the uh, little comet that was, uh, that was the element, and that was the first one. So as I started getting the hang of it, I drew the first element and I knew that I wanted to play with different scales. So this first one wasn't as big, wasn't, a, wasn't as, a, as a really big element. And I knew that I wanted to start rather small and kind of build it from there. So as you can see, I'm still drawing through, uh, as I'm going through the path, I'm just getting each frame uh, using the onion skin feature, making sure that I have covered all of the necessary frames in order to build that sequence. So then I could just play a little preview of what I had, and this was the very first element already done in a, in a few frames. So I would say probably around 10 or 11 frames, and then it was time to get to the next one. So I knew also that I wanted to play with a few colors, so now I'm creating a green element, a much bigger element to kind of create that sense of contrast and depth to the overall composition once all of these elements are animated. I didn't go too, too crazy, guys, to be honest. I just drew maybe about four or five of these elements. Uh, I could have kept going. Uh, this is the preview now of two elements running across, and it's super cool to see their different sizes as well as different speed, uh, different speeds as they run uh, across the face. And now I just decided to create a smaller element, again, for the sense of contrast of, of size. And then finally, I've created a few more, just kind of getting towards the end of this exercise, I started creating multiples uh, each time that I was drawing per frame. And then I think I'm getting very close here to a final preview of what I had so far. So I had about maybe five or six elements flying through the screen. And I was actually quite happy because this was just enough for me to actually start testing on the face. And then as you can see, by turning reference, the reference option and using face, then you can just tap on options and you can tap on full screen and now you have a full screen feed of your animation. With that, you can then press record and there you have it. You'll have a little MP4, a recording of your animation so that you can then share on social media. And what's also really, really cool is that you can actually rotate your iPad about 90 degrees and with that position on an iPad that's 12.9 inches, you can see not only the feed or the recording that you're making, but also a timeline where you can then, you're able to tweak the frames per second. You can go a little faster, a little slower. You can tweak, you know, uh, if, you, if your animation is a loop, a ping pong animation, or just a one shot. So that about covers for this tutorial, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, a like would be super appreciated, as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews, and speed paint videos, and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload, and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.